Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, current viewers, there's a lot of them. Um, we have, uh, of course, the latest iteration on EAP, still trying to whittle down the the uh, various rendering issues there. Um, no big things other than rendering issues that I know of. Um, we have um, also a, another viewer full of rendering tweaks, let, the Let Me Render viewer. The Bakes on Mesh, which I gather we ran into um, some tricky questions of how to handle transparency in in some of the base layers, especially for the new universal wearables. Um, they're trying to sort out a reason yeah. there. Yeah, we have a, a plan for that um, that we'll be pursuing and documenting in uh, in due course. Right, and that will take another update to the back-end service, right? Uh, the yeah, the appearance service. Um, there's there's going to be a small viewer change to add a new type of icon for the new universal wearable as well. But that's that should be small. But we're just waiting on the art. Okay, and uh, and we have of course an another maintenance viewer from our intrepid um, bug hunting team, um, and. Um, there's also distinct from that the rainbow viewer, which has the fix for the recent Windows and NVIDIA driver update changes that can scramble the colors on your screen when you exit the viewer. And there's that that branch has just that fix in it. So um, you uh, you might want to pull from that one. And, and get a build out for that uh, at some point, or have one available to give to people who have that have that problem. Um, well, it's a, it's a very small sample size, so I don't know how how much we can believe about its crashiness yet. But um, so uh, it, it it did solve the problem for Simon, um, and that was it. it had, for some reason, it had been plaguing Simon for a long time, so. Uh, when it finally got to the point where it was bugging non-Linden users, we uh, we got around to fixing it. So um, internally, we ref we refer it we we refer to it as Simon's bug. Uh, oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, so that's the current crop of viewers, um, and I think that pretty much covers that part. So the floor is open. Questions? Issues? Legacy profiles? Yeah. Uh, yeah, where's the, let's see, where's that in the pipeline? We we have that coming. Yeah, that's uh, that's in progress. Um, Alexa is working with the uh, 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 devs who are on that currently to um, define some of the behavior. There's there's definitely some additional work in terms of uh, some web changes needed to. To break out like the feed is a separate thing, and some some open UI questions that are still getting hashed out and so forth. It's uh, it's in progress though. Uh, you might want to wait wait on redoing the profiles. We're redoing the profiles. So um, okay, a picture aspect ratio, yeah. Um, okay, Niran will do the profiles again in a year. <laughs> uh, the 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 as I understand it, the current iteration of the plan, and the, as you know, these things can change. Um, the is that essentially we're going back to 
profiles that are all in viewer UI, not web UI, except for the feed. And the feed will appear as a part of that, but that will be coming from the web. So it uh, it does perform well, Or maybe it will even get its own floater and not be a part of that. Yeah. So, like I said, details always change. Um, so, uh, yeah, a few of the internal users that have begun using it and say, wow, it's great. You can open profiles again because they're quick. So Multiple profiles, too. Yeah. For like all the people in the room. Yeah. So, um, so thank you very much for the help we've gotten on that. And um, we are very actively seized of trying to get that out the door. So. Um, The oh the 360 snapshot viewer yeah we we took it down because it was so far behind um, we have been um, we have been uh, seeing whether or not we can just merge it up and and get it out again more up to date um, and so far that's going well but it hasn't been through QA yet so um, we are going to try and put an updated version out. It won't have any changes to the behavior of taking the 360 snapshots yet. We're not going to forget about that. We will get back to it eventually, but uh, it's um, the the old one had become so stale that we just didn't want to leave it there. So um, the new one will be out. It will have the new updater mechanism and with all the rest of the new that have been put in the viewer since been like a year since that was updated. So yeah, it was just a question if it was so old. It was to leave it there no it's not it, it was not a it was not a we're giving up on this it was just a oh that's so terribly old we shouldn't but um first couple of steps of getting it up to date seem to have gone pretty well we'll see what happens in it it's a qa I'm I'm sorry to hear that, Willie. Really. Um, they're they're easier for us, and uh, but we do have a list of um, you know change improvements, uh, which at some point we'll probably get back to. So feel free to contribute suggestions with respect to that. Okay, uh, I'll if if you'll send me that Jira, I'll make sure it gets incorporated into the into the list that I've got. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do have I I have a I have a list for that. No, no user interface ever survives contact with the user. I contributed a bug or two to that list, so I'm, it'll be interesting to see if any of yours match mine. That would add credibility to them. Okay.
did that get imported? Not yet. Okay. Thanks. Y'all are awfully quiet. Everything must be going really well. Everybody ready for SL16B? I think it might be a bad idea to let us sell folk. <laughs> Opinions on that might differ. Um, <laughs> coffee, that sure would be nice, but I doubt it. Uh, a, a Linden uh, working on um another part of uh our product not directly related to second life but uh one of the supporting areas uh pinged me and said how old do you have to be to be in second life and i said 16 and she said oh so sl is old enough to play with itself now <laughs> There's a reason I didn't put this in text. <laughs> now, this meeting is always videoed and. I right know. I. <laughs> it was, it's worth. You can quote me on that. I didn't uh, <laughs> give away the original Linden. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
Is that what they call you in our... Um... I... Uh, yeah, I uh, don't have a direct answer about the adult content um, for the iOS app. Uh, clearly, uh, we will need a way to um, be compliant uh, with the uh, App Store requirements in order to have an iOS app that continues to exist. Um, yeah, we'll we'll just have to see how the process of getting through Apple's reviews goes when we get there. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll ask MetaChat for some coaching. Um, yeah, there was one question we wanted to throw out there. So there was. Uh, as you know, we, we went through this little um, change of policy on the number of groups for basic users, and we, we reversed ourselves, and we aren't going to reduce that um, below what it is today. Um, it's part of the upcoming premium changes. Okay, um, we hear that part, but we also hear from the same audience that Group chat has lots of problems, especially performance problems. And we are actually doing some work on that. Um, there's, there's a fact I'd like to share and, a, and, some, and your opinions to solicit. Um, so don't say we don't do that. Um, the, it turns out that um, chat and group notices are by a substantial margin the minority of the, of the traffic handled by the chat system by far the majority of the messages being passed around in the chat system are notices about which members of the group have logged in and or logged out every time any member of any group logs in or logs out that fact is propagated to every member of the group that's online. Okay, and it turns out that those are far more frequent um, in uh, than in all in uh, across the board, and especially in large groups. Right. So if you've got a group with tens of thousands or even more uh, users in it. Those messages are happening many, many times a second. Um, well, um, no, what we decided was the ability to see the list. We're still sending the messages around. Um, so it's it, what's, what we had to disable because of a, an unrelated problem was being able to fetch who all the members of the groups are. The, the, um, uh, in some cases, tens of thousands of online users. There are groups that are so large that they get up into that range that are online. And it uh, so, and we have a lot of people, apparently, who log in for very, very short or they are checking for messages or something. Um, uh, <laughs> so, Yeah, the, um, so the question that I have for you is, uh, as, a, as a group of residents who deal with lots of other residents, just how bad would it be if we didn't provide that feature in groups anymore? This said, either for large groups where large is maybe in the hundreds range, um, or even 100, um, or maybe just in all groups. Why bother to 
tell the viewers whether or not people are online? Would it, you know, one of the things we got back was taking away lots of group memberships uh, is would would seriously impact the lives of many residents. I hear that. So I'm what I'm asking is, how much impact would it be if you didn't get those notices for groups? Wouldn't affect your ability to see when your friends come and go. That's an entirely different notification. No, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I, you would see anybody who has who has chatted in group for sure. Yeah, including the list of, you know, moderators or other sort of group officers might make sense. But trying to trying to keep it up to date for all, you know, hundred fifty thousand users seems kinda of wacky. Right. Right. So let's say we find a way to keep the list of which moderators are online for everyone. And keep a list of who is online in the group for the moderators. Everybody else wouldn't see it. Yeah, the last login feature is unrelated to sending those messages around. Okay, well, we may do some experiments with that on a subset of the groups and see what happens. Uh, Yeah, last login is actually not, that's not dependent on those chat messages at all. That's, there's a, there's an entry in the database for when the last time you logged in. Um, Thank you, Katie, for saying that so that I didn't have to. The, the purpose of this exercise is not to prevent people from being able to tell who is online altogether. It's to 
prevent us from sending those messages around all the time for all the group members and all the groups. Yeah, which would which would certainly enormously reduce the amount of work the chat servers have to deal with, and and therefore we think it might have a beneficial impact on the performance of the chat. Oh, the thing, group chat. The actual, the, 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 yes, the actual chat messages. Well, you know, I I say might because. Uh, Second Life has surprised me a great many times with how how it behaves. I mean, large distributed systems, especially very large, very complicated distributed systems, um, have emergent behavior. You know, you have you have things that end up having an effect on other things that you didn't anticipate. So, I think it's reasonable to suppose that cutting out, you know. Uh, more than half of the traffic would help performance, but I'm, I'm a little gun shy about making hard and fast predictions. Yeah, we, we probably could modify the fewer codes so that it keeps people in the list if they if they uh, if they're in fact what we could do now that I think about it is we could send only the logouts and not the logins. Um, that would allow us to prune the lists quickly. I have to experiment with it a little bit. The, the notion, one of the things that makes groups difficult to deal with is that groups have evolved so much. That is, they get, they have been used for many different purposes. We have, uh, we have a, we have a JIRA in our JIRA system SL-2, which is a list of things we will do when we invent a time machine and go back and fix the bad decisions we made. Um, so far, we haven't, we're still blocked on that issue. Um, the, uh, it's kind of a fun one to peruse, but um, SL1 is we take over the world and um, everybody's in Second Life. Um, the uh, so the, I know you distracted me. Oh yeah, time machines. So groups, groups. The, one of the things that makes groups difficult to work on is they get used for so many different things. Uh, if we if we could, we'd probably go back and have entirely different kinds of groups. Some of which have, you know, one has chat, one has, is only for access control, one is only for something else. I, you know, the, as it as it stands right now. Um, they're all kind of mixed together, and that that makes them uh, more complicated to work on, and and especially more complicated to change the what the functionality is because it's all tangled. Uh, it it's hard to say whether it would be too much of a hassle to redo how groups work. Um, Yeah, there it is. There's SL1. That's the summary for SL1. Thank you, Grimpity. Um, 
preempting your next question, SL3 is build an army of robot cats. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Um, I think we've done that. Haven't we? We did Animesh. There are probably an awful lot yeah, of cats. Animesh cats. What are they I can't say. The issue is very thin on detail, <laughs> uh, which is why uh, it is currently closed. Let's not go through all of them. Um, I mean, eventually they get boring. <laughs> right. Uh, we already bundle those messages into batches, um, and we have been experimenting with how often they they go out. We've already been doing that, policy. Um, we have different groups have different timers right now, so that we can measure the differences. We're we're trying to use science. It's, I know it's cheating, but there you go. Um, but the, those, the, those, that batching doesn't apply to the chat messages, only to the login logout notices. I don't, I don't think so, Anastasia. I'm, that is, we we don't see any differences in the in the in the chat message timing on the groups that are on those different servers. But the big, the big change would be not sending them at all. So. It's, it's actually complicated to measure because of the way it works. Um, different groups are on different servers and um, of course, the users are on any number of different simulators. It, it's it's not an easy it's not an easy service to to measure. Yeah, the 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 break groups into different kinds of groups is a is one possibility, but. Um, we would have the backwards compatibility problem, and we would need to iterate over all the groups. It would be it would be a, a it would be a really big project, and I'm not sure it would be. You know, if we if we did it perfectly, we would have a much cleaner system when we were done. But getting there would be a nightmare. Hopefully not that bad a nightmare, Jonathan, but one never knows. Uh, Actually, I think I said attachments on region crossings was at least partially fixed. Um, that's not quite the same thing. Um, and we're still working on that.
Do we understand why avatar arrival in the region has uh, such a massive impact? Um, we have a partial understanding of that. Um, I'm not sure we completely understand it, um, and we have a we have some ideas on how to how to fix it. Well, how to improve it anyway. Losing your hair on teleports. That's that's a new one on me. That's that's entirely possible, really. There you go. Well, we're 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 continuing to work on. Uh, we we call it internally. I usually refer to it as the sticky attachments project. So. I I don't actually think that doing anything about this on the viewer side is going to help. Holly so, um I think it really is something that we have to address on the server, because the variability of the of the behavior of viewers is so great and the and some people may believe that there are incentives to to game the system Being able to block group chats on the server side is something we have discussed. Um, it's possible that we'll 
add a viewer accessible API for that so that so that we could do it. Um, I'm not, we haven't gotten back to looking at the, at the offline scripted IMs. I'm not sure what the deal with that is yet. Well, it's, it is on the list of things to look at. Offline inventory offers. Okay. Oh, it looks as though the offline inventory offers thing is fixed. Uh, let me see what viewer that was in. That's in Terranino. I I lose offline IMs. I mean, I get them as email, but I often can't find them again. Um, let me see. Follow up for this. I'll get somebody to retest it all. If it's broken since the you know fix that we thought fixed it, then refiling it might make sense. It's probably the easiest way to keep track of the state. Yeah. 
but this is one where I, I think we need a very careful repro because there's been more than a little confusion about just exactly what the bug is. So like having a repro that includes an object that provides a, an inventory item that doesn't arrive would be, be a great addition. I'm just saying, make sure that there is a repro in the refile bug that really repros the problem. OK. All right, we'll, we'll look at it again. Okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll do some retesting on that and see what what's what. Thank you, Riley. Appreciate it. Um, any other things that we ought to be hunting for? Questions? Uh, Niran, could you phrase that in the form of a question? Oh, oh, I see.
fit unnecessary login delays. Give me a hint. But it causes the login to be delayed so badly. Some things in the viewer that are causing the login to be delayed. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I am very much aware of a bunch of things that happen after the login has succeeded and while you're connecting, but yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, happy. To, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll be happy to hear about that, Kitty. I mean, I'm aware of some. Um, unfortunately, there were a lot of times when, in the viewer, where people thought, "Oh, we should do this at login so that we don't have to do it again later." Um, not really understanding the scale of. What, yeah, I don't, you know, for example, I'm not sure that early on anybody thought that inventories would, you know, ever reach anything remotely like the sizes that we see now. We'll, uh, we'll we'll have to talk to legal and finance about hiring people in Belgium, uh, which means I should get in my plug for graphics developers, rendering people, still looking. If you know any, send them my way. More specifically, send them Veer's way. Yes, uh, rendering wizards are thin on the ground. There's no question about it.
last minute stuff. We're up to close to the last minute. That's that's true, Veer. Um, we actually have freakishly good retention here. <clears throat> uh, I think it's pretty clear why we can never discuss individual cases. All right. I will uh, see you all in two weeks, I hope, and, and or before then. Um, see you next time. <laughs>